Hi, I know I haven't made a video in a couple of weeks, but university is kind of near in the end now and I've had a lot of work to do, but thankfully the bulk of it's over now, so hopefully I'll be uploading videos more regularly. Um, I haven't read a lot this month, but apparently when I don't read a lot, I buy a lot of books and I've bought 14 books in April. I know we're well into May now. But I really wanted to share with you what I've been getting because I think some of you are going to be very happy with what I've been getting recently. I've had quite a few comments on past videos about how I've never read a Jane Austen book so you will be very happy to know I have four to add to my classics collection and I will get around to reading them this summer so I'm going to start off with classics first. In the first half I've got like quite a lot of classics to get through and then I've bought some new books which have just come out because I had quite a lot saved up on my Waterstones card so I'm just gonna jump right in. The first book that I came across this month and um, it's very interesting Um, my grandma just put a book on my bed said I found this in the attic and when I got it it looked like this and I was really confused as to what it was and it had been like taped over the back like this with sellotape and I was wondering why this was and I peeled the sellotape off the front and underneath it was a cover which is Lady, Chatterley, Lady Chatterley's Lover by Dage Lawrence and if you watched a couple of videos ago I already have this in the Penguin Essentials edition um, but I don't really have a really really old Penguin book um, I'm assuming that whoever had this taped over the front because they didn't want people to see what they were reading because this is a 1960s edition and this was seen as a very controversial book because of its rudeness shall we say so I'm assuming that's why there is paper on the front but I am I was I don't know whether to take it off or not or keep it on because it's kind of like the character of the book that someone's taped this over so I think I'm just gonna leave it like this. It's in really good condition, the spine isn't broken, um and I'm very excited to have a 1960s penguin book um on my shelf, but I don't think I'm gonna read this version in case it gets damaged. I do have the Essentials edition, which I will probably read when I get round to it. And I really like the Essentials um, edition, so I really wanna get a lot of these and I have another two to show you. Like I said, I really wanna grow my Penguins Essential collection. So I got these for 10 pence each, which were, are in perfect condition. And they are Miss Dalloway by Virginia Woolf and Cold Comforts Farm by Stella Gibbons. And I didn't know a lot about either of these, but I've read that this one on Goodreads has really good reviews and it's a really funny story. It's about a well-to-do girl who I think is 20 and she becomes orphaned and goes to live with her extended family on a farm. And I don't, I don't really know much about it, that's all I really know, but I will give this a read because apparently it's pretty funny. I've also never read a Virginia Woolf book and this is about a woman who lives an upper class lifestyle and I've never read a book like this before so I'm pretty excited to give this one a read as well. I can think of one viewer especially who I know will probably comment on this video and be very excited because I finally got my hands on a Charles Dickens book and this is A Tale of Two Cities and Quite a few of you really have been saying you will love Charles Dickens, you will love Charles Dickens and I probably will love Charles Dickens so I picked this up. This again was like 10 pence, it's in perfect condition and it's an illustrated version on the inside. There's quite a few pictures which I really like the, the original pictures to go with the story. Um, what I find really interesting about this book is I've never seen one like this where they don't have like a blurb on the back and there's no... Um, publisher like logo anywhere and I've never really seen a book that does that before Um, I will do a review of this and this is going on my summer shelf I don't know a lot about it and I don't want to know a lot about it I just want to read it so then I went from having no Jane Austen books to having four within the space of a day I kind of wish I'd got all these in the same covers but if they're from a charity shop they're thrifted and they again were like 10 pence each and they're all in really good condition I got Pride and Prejudice and Emma in the same covers and then I got Sense and Sensibility in Mansfield Park in these green border covers which 
which has which say two pound on the covers are actually just like paper but for a new book two pound was really good and i'm really sad that borders closed around mine because if they did all the classics in this green color which i really love i probably just would have went on a massive spending spree and bought every single classic book in this cover because i don't know i really like the simplicity of it and how plain it is and green the green's like a really nice color i know that sounds weird but yep i'm very excited to read these and I'm not really sure what order I should be reading these in, so if anyone could let me know in the comments what order is best to read these in. I have Emma, Pride and Prejudice, Mansfield Park and Sense and Sensibility. And um, that would be really helpful because I want to start reading one soon and I, I just don't know what order these are best read in. I then got Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte, which some of you are so disappointed that I've never read, but we had to read a chapter in secondary school um, because Part of Jane Eyre is set in the town that I'm from so we had to read it and I just found it really boring at school but hopefully with a bit more maturity, if I've matured at all, I I think I'll like it, like I'll go back and read it very properly and I do want an old cover of this so this is going to be the one that I read and I'm going to look out for an old penguin cover if I can find one so that's the plan. And that's it for the classic section but for one month I think I got quite a good range of classics and I'm very excited to read them all. I know I could get them all on like an e-reader for free on iBooks but I really enjoy having physical books so I will spend the money on getting them. Okay first I am so excited by the next book I have. Not only just because I have the book but because it's signed and I don't have a signed book and this is my first signed one. Unfortunately, I didn't meet the author. They just had them left over in the shop. I'm assuming that she's done a signing for Waterstones for the first batch. But it is A Court of Thrones and Roses by Sarah J Maas. And if you open the cover, it has a sticker in that has been signed. I really, really enjoy her Throne of Glass series. And not so much the first one, but the second book was like my favorite read of the year so far. So I really, really wanted this one. And it's a fairy tale retelling of Beauty and the Beast, I think, or so I've heard. I could be completely wrong. I've not read the back yet. I don't like reading the back of books because sometimes they get a little bit spoilery. I didn't realize this was a signed copy. I just assumed that this was a buy one, get one half price sticker. And it was only when I got the tail, I realized that the front, um, paid like the cover had been bent open and I was like oh I'm going to change it for another one and then I went back and then realized there wasn't any left and then I really looked at it properly and it said signed by author and I was like oh my god and this was like the last one on a massive empty shelf so I can't believe I didn't read it I just knew I wanted it so I picked it up and didn't look at any of the stickers but I have a signed Sarah J Maas book in my hands and it is mine and I actually have a signed author book like crazy. I've been feeling in a very autobiography mood probably because it's a bit of a change and I don't really read a lot. Um, I went to the library and sat in there for a bit and read Yes Please but I don't know it just wasn't for me and I felt like actually buying one and lying in bed and sitting and reading it properly and I had some um, points on my Waterstones card so I got All I Know by Carrie Hope Fletcher and I didn't realise until I'd got this that if you open it up it has a really nice cover on here um, I really like it when people put effort into their autobiographies and their books in general and I've heard that Carrie's put a lot of effort into hers um, so I thought I'd support a fellow YouTuber and buy their autobiography What I think is going to be most interesting about this is she isn't that much older than me and when I read autobiographies I usually read them for people that are in their 40s and 50s reflecting back on their life but Carrie's going to be in a kind of similar mindset of me about where the future's going, how they got to where they are now. So I think it'll be really refreshing to read an, like a book by someone that's a similar age to me and I'll have a review for this. I've also borrowed a book off my aunt which I really wanted to buy but then she said that I could read it so I was like yep save me money. Um, and I've heard a lot of good things about it, it's kind of getting really popular and it's The Girl on the Train by Paula Hawkins. Apparently it's set on a commuter train um, I've heard that it's a bit like Marmite, you either love it or you don't really see the hype and it is getting quite a lot of hype and I'm worried about the hype to be honest but I'm going to read it. It seems like quite a quick read if I'm honest so I'm hoping to get this read this month um, so I'll have a review up for this as well. And she also gave me The Lake of Dreams by Kim Edwards who is the author of The Memory Keeper's Daughter and I didn't read that but 
that was quite big, that was a bestseller. Um, I'm not sure if this is going to be like my kind of thing or not, but I'm going to give it a go and see how we get on with that because I don't really read a lot of books like this so I might just enjoy the change from like fantasy and sci-fi. And another book that I bought in a charity shop was Cloud Atlas by David Mitchell and I'm very impressed with the quality of charity shop books this month and um, most of the books that you find in charity shops I find are unread and the spines are really good and it's definitely worth having a look in charity shops if you've been in Waterstones and think Oh, I fancy that book and um, just go and look in a few charity shops before you actually do take the plunge because it's nice to support charity even though the Warstone supports authors but you can find like really good bargains in there like I think I've shown this month like most of my books have been from charity shops and they've been in very good condition now Cloud Atlas had there's been a movie out of it and I've not seen the movie and I don't really know a lot about it still from what the back suggests um, it's about six lives that are from all different time periods, but somehow they interlink. Um, I've had a look, I've had a quick flick through it, and the language and the writing looks really difficult. Um, so I think I'm going to read this in the summer when I'm very into like a complicated book. Because um, it does look like a complicated read, I'm not going to lie. And I've had a look on Goodreads and a lot of people say like, this is like an effort at book to read. Um, sometimes I really enjoy them, sometimes I'm just not in the mood for them, so hope that I get around to reading this soon because I'm not gonna lie I'm in a little bit of a reading slump but I think that's because I'm trying to power through the Game of Thrones series and that's all I've been reading recently um, and I want to do the reason I've not been making review videos is because I don't want to review each individual one I want to review them as a series and they're very long they're very complicated and they're so in-depth that I don't know, when I finished one I need a break before I can start the other one but I don't feel like reading anything else. Um, I hope people kind of understand that. So yeah, that's probably a video that's going to come at the end of the month. And um, just another thing that I want to share is, if you live in the UK and you have a TK Maxx near you, um, have a look to see if they have like a stationery section because the one near me does in the Metro Centre and they have the most beautiful journals in for £5 and I've started keeping a journal after watching some journal videos on YouTube about people like sharing their journal collections and I thought what a really good idea and it's such a good way to wind down at the end of the day and relax um, which has been really helping me through some tough times and I got this one from TK Maxx and it's absolutely amazing quality and it was only £5, hang on, I'll find you a better view. But the quote was really fitting considering how much university work I've got to do. The paper is such good quality and it's such better than um, Paper Chase which they're like £15 in so if you're looking for a journal for about £5, I really recommend trying TK Maxx. I know it's not a place to think to go for stationery, but it's really good. And that's it for my April haul-in of books, but I've done pretty well on the book front despite not actually reading anything. And even though I'm trying to kill my TBR bookshelves, yeah, I'm just adding to them and this is terrible. Um, but yeah, my spring TBR isn't going too well. I've got a couple of videos planned that should be up in the next week or so that I'm really looking forward to putting out. So um, thank you for watching and let me know what you've been buying this month and please let me know in the comments what order to read Jane Austen's books in. Um, so yeah, that's all I really have to say today. So thank you. Bye.